News First, Newsline with Faraz Shaukat Ali. And a splendid morning to you. This is Newsline Live. We're broadcasting from the News First studios in Dawson Street in Colombo. And uh, yes, 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 uh, everybody's talking about this uh, four-letter word. Uh, bond, bond and bond. And uh, yes, well, it's all here. Look, you can see it here. Um, look, there's five volumes here, but this is the so-called forensic uh, audit reports. It's incomplete, say some, and it probably is. But, and it, it's a lot of reading. Not everyone, I doubt, has read it all fully yet, but we are in the process. And one of those who's uh, been doing some reading, uh, burning the midnight oil even, so to speak, is uh, Mr. Rusri Palatenakorn, who is, of course, very familiar with the subject. So he's right here, live in the studio. Mr. Rusri Palatenakorn, good morning to you. Good morning, Faraz. Um, you've seen the voluminous volumes. I had a glance at it. Right. <laughs> and um, they, of course, you say that this is not, uh, it's not complete yet. Yes, yeah, some say so. I don't know, because until, until we go through, go it, through completely, it completely, yes. we won't be able to justify that claim. Indeed. Yeah. Um, what is uh, apparent uh, to you as you've sort of looked through it from the executive summary, let's say, of the first two volumes? What, what is becoming apparent to you? For us, the very first thing that comes to my mind is the, the efforts that we have put in, yeah. particularly in this channel, yeah. what you and I and several other, you know, who are people, very knowledgeable people's participation. Indeed. We did try to convince the public about a big fraud that has taken place. Right. Some viewed it at that time, you know, that we are not talking sense, right. some thought like that. Yeah. But the, the stage that it led, led to and finally how it ended up, mm you know, appointing commissions, all that. This forensic audit report, yeah. to the extent of the confirmation of the material put forward by us. On this network. On this, yeah, you know, it confirms. Yeah. That, is the, that is my first reaction mm. about this uh, forensic audit. In, fi in fact, uh, you're right, and thank you for uh, saying this, but uh, yesterday, uh, we spent uh, the whole day uh, at uh, on the newsroom, and uh, the thought and the uh, thinking of everyone there was that you know uh, the, this confirmation was important for us. Um, we firmly believed in it, and I just want to put it into perspective. Red News First, we've had programs almost dedicated to the bond scam. We, several hours of broadcasting time dedicated to this subject and to this departure from due process, the conflict of interest, uh, the similarities uh, that had gone on, and so on. I, think I, I, must say, I must say, by interrupting you, Faras, public all gratitude to this, the, to the great work that you, you have know, done. You I, know, I, I, I want to uh, thank our, our shareholders uh, for. Uh, allowing us the, the leeway, um, because obviously, uh, let's be frank about it, uh, not a lot of uh, people want to uh, support us with uh, advertising and so on, not when you are taking uh, the authorities on. But we did so not to take the authorities on, yeah. but to highlight the lack of transparency, the, the departures from due process. And that is what it is. That's what, by the way, Mr. Spaller, um, that is what has struck me first and foremost. Yeah. The, the depth to which this abuse of the process yes. has taken place. Yeah. So many, so many. Um, and, uh, and also, very, very sadly, actually, very sadly, um, I have to say this, the late Joan Munisinger always told me in meetings that we had, even on air, she always said that it is 
we, meet, we need to look at the actions of the officials of the central bank as well. She always maintained that because he, she said, probably quite rightly, that you couldn't just have one man doing all this. It was a team. Yeah. And, and in here, you can see some of those departures of process. Yes. Uh, for example, Mr. Supala, in here is a section uh, where after the forensic auditors uh, gave notice that they will need the <laughs> devices, yeah. that mean it could mean a tab, it could mean a laptop, it could mean a telephone, or any combination of those things. The digital the environment. The digital environment. Yeah. And the notice was given that they will require their devices. These devices are, of course, the legal ownership is with the central bank. And when they issue one such device to you, you are bound, not only by the terms of your employment, but also in terms of accepting and using that device, you're bound by the Central Bank of Sri Lanka's rules uh -huh. governing this use. <coughs> and one such rule is that you shall not delete anything from those devices. That's just not on, it's against the rules. And yet we found a very senior man uh, who, after having been given notice, uh, he, he got an extension of that time period that the advance notice period that was given and it when he did hand it over the lo and behold the auditors found out that uh, there was items there that had been uh, deleted far as that is uh, you are absolutely correct you know the domain that were in and in, in under their purview some of these officers you know as users as as people who control such domains were expected to maintain a certain degree of uh, uh, protection yeah. that they should afford to such the documents that were available with them. But uh, the, the forensic auditors have commented specifically that certain vital information that were required for them to formulate their opinions correctly mm. without any uh, other doubts have been deleted and they say the process of deletion cannot be attributed to an automatic deletion yeah. due to overloading or some other thing. Yeah. They, they feel that either it is the user or an authority who had access to it. Mm. So that's a very important aspect. Yeah. Worse, worse, not the central bank's part, Faras. I don't know whether you have had time to go through. I mean, yeah. it takes a few days to go through this properly. Yeah. Uh, if you had time, if you saw the part that is dealing with the Provident Fund, I think the worst damages have been done there. Mm. And the people whom we discussed by name, you and I, yeah. and others, by name, They're there. it has been reconfirmed that they are the people who have been behind the operating at the, in the Provident Fund Department while attached to the central, being attached to the central bank thereafter being posted to special positions by the central bank governor and before that they were associated with companies which played this role for some time in a very secretively. Mm. This, these are the things that this forensic audit report gives. But one thing I would like to emphasize is yeah. we don't want to look at this forensic audit report like something like uh, what the former Prime Minister, Mr. Ranil Vikram Singh, appointed committee, uh, the lawyer's committee. Yeah. It's not something like the that. The committee. But some people tend to think, yeah. you know, the implications of the report should yeah. be to pinpoint, uh, you know, the finger yeah. at somebody, somebody and politically motivated, you know, accusations. Right. That should not be the way. Now, for as far as the bond scam, which instigated all these inquiries and investigations and follow-up actions, commissions and so on, and even change of practices, Indeed. you know, that itself was a matter that had to be examined thoroughly, dealt with properly, and the people who are responsible to be brought to books. It's obviously such an important matter exactly. that President Gautabi Rajapaksa has included in his manifesto. 
I think yes, he did it because did it. there was so much of a clamor in the society. Indeed. And it was a matter that affected the future economy of the country in a very bad way. The forensic auditors have commented on it. Indeed. How the 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 rates of uh, offers that were given and the the transactions that have taken place have affected the the, the structure interest structure interest operations interest levels of the country all that is contributed that, to very clearly that's right because uh, initially in uh, 2015 february 2015 they arbitrarily raised the rates yeah. by nearly three percent and the consequences Yes, and the, and the consequences was horrendous. Yeah. Because one of the consequences, of course, is the impact it had on the uh, on the foreign exchange and the, the overall debt yeah. level of Sri Lanka. Yeah. Um, in in you know our, our income is in rupees, yeah. and so in rupee terms, yeah. uh, the the uh, the debt was increased several fold. Um, and on Newsline Live, we do uh, encourage you, the viewers. This is your program. To send us your questions in by SMS, please, 0772 300 305, card coming up on your screen right now. So by SMS to 0772 300 305. Um, the card doesn't say it, but it's by SMS only, please. And uh, we are, of course, in conversation with Mr. Rusri Palatena Kun, who is um, a familiar face on, on the network, and uh, he's, of course, a senior retired banker. Now, Mr. Rusipala, departure is a due process. We see uh, on the face of it um, several uh, similarities uh, in the sense that the monetary board of Sri Lanka, the ultimate authority, and if you like, the custodians of the Monetary Law Act, um, they appear to have gone to sleep. Yes. For us, one thing that we have to bear in mind is, it is true that the originated, the idea originated at the COP level. Yeah. They wanted some kind of foreign, uh, forensic examination into the matter. Yeah. Obviously, because you know the parliamentarians were not conversant with the subject at all. No. They were dealing with. Mm -hmm. So they wanted to rely on some reliable information and material put in authentically. Yeah. For that reason, they requested and they originated this idea of a forensic uh, audit. Yeah. But the forensic audit that they wanted, what they wanted really to confirm, if I uh, gathered it correctly, yeah. was to establish the facts about the, uh, about the bond scam that they were inquiring into. Mm. But at the same time, they were also interested to find out whether it was a continuing practice you know, whether it has continued over a period of time. Mm. And that was the part that was played by most of the members in the COP right. who were interested in diluting the effect of that fraud, the scam, by attaching it to other things that have happened before. Yeah. Now, what I want to say is the public as public, we should understand that nothing is going to dilute the gravity of that grievous crime that they committed, Right. the bond scam. Yeah. Nothing whatever has happened before. But then in that context, it is important to know if logically, if you look at it, yeah. okay, this last government came into power. Yeah. If they knew that there was a practice that was going in the central bank, which was bad. Which the prime minister didn't allude, he openly said it. He, he admitted and he said he wants to change the systems because of, the, because did he, of that. Of did that, he yes. instigate any action to inquire into it until the bond matter came up, until the scam was uh, highlighted? I mean, this is where the mistake is. So, what it concludes is, if there have been any lapses or shortages or even say corrupt activity, yeah. they were trying to cash in on the situation. Instead of correcting this. Instead of correcting it. That is, the, that is my approach to this whole thing. Therefore, if anybody is trying to dilute the effect of the gravest crime, heinous crime that they committed mm. to the country with so much of future consequences. Today, the country, I think uh, President Godabe Rajapaksa can do very little in this context. Mm. Very little. Yeah. He has enough plans. He has enough... Uh, but, he can, but he can oversee yeah. uh, the balanced 
inquiry and prosecution of he this. can that's only one part but yeah. see where, how, where he has got stuck because of the wrongdoings of these people in the past yeah. he has got stuck in a place where he can't move forward easily not that easily so it 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 calls for a lot of action together by the society to support and get out of this mess and that mess was created by the people who mishandled things during that period and this is one aspect where the whole country without any debate will accept has contributed in the biggest possible way the bond scam the, there is um, <coughs> there is evidence here in the forensic thank you audit. for the nice cup of tea Let indeed yes um, uh, that's thanks to our friends at jones you know uh, so um, cheers to uh, to Jones Tea. <laughs> it's, it's actually quite good and very refreshing. Yeah, it is. Um, now then, I, I, let me have a quick sip. Well, you know, thank you, Jones, for that tea. Um, up eight, eight, we call it. <laughs> you know. It's good. Uh, and it is up eight, eight. Um, right? So, now then, coming back to this uh, forensic audit, it says here that this practice of direct placements took place in in the past yeah but it also says it points to a potential um, collusion if you like a potential collusion yeah because on the one side the forensic audit uh, says that there were people connected to uh, the former governor at that time Ajit Nivad Cabra and they they've said it that there are various people, there's, there's a cousin, there's a brother, there's a, some various relatives in various places. And these various places um, also um, engaged in um, purchasing of bonds. Yeah. Now, they then say, but it doesn't mean that they got these bonds because of this relationship, it says that too, yeah. So, that's on that side. On this side, we have Arjuna Mahendran and his son-in-law. So, what are we to, what is the public meant to make out of this? No, far as you have to go deep into it, you know. Some of the references I just glanced through, what you, on what you just now referred to. Yeah. You see, personally, personifying, you know, and then giving some names, yeah. like that of Mr. Cabral and so on. Yeah. I just went through those. I yeah. found that, you know, the, those companies at that time, the primary dealers were either conglomerates of banks yeah. or banks by themselves. Right. So what does it indicate? Yeah. You know, banks are subject to all kinds of regulation, regulatory requirements. And also they are answerable to their shareholders yeah. and also their business operations are carefully monitored, yeah. carefully monitored. Unlike a private company, yeah. a private company, limited company, a family company, which has put in money from somewhere doing an operation. Mm. There is a big difference. Yeah. So the people that have been identified as being associated with those transactions, yeah. which got the larger volumes in the dis in this direct placement system yeah. happen to be those that's one reality that you can't forget right. happen to be those bank and but the they, were, they, were, they were also recipients of these direct placements no the problem is for us you have to look in take into account the circumstances under which these operations took place mm -hmm. the country situation the economy the nature of you know the 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 appetite of the market at that time yes but I understand that. I, I hear what you're saying. Yeah. But I read what the auditors have written down. Yeah. And they're saying that in the case of one company, yeah. um, I don't know why, f I suppose I can mention the name because it's in the book and it's, it's public. Equity. Uh, yes. Yes. Uh, equity is there. Now, Equity is a company that is owned um, at the time by DFCC. It is marketed as uh, being jointly owned by DFCC and HMB. Correct. Right? Yeah. And then you find that Mr. Cabral's people connected to Mr. Cabral, I, the, the exact relationship fails me there. But anyway, people close to him and his family are on the boards of these companies. They're also on the board of the commercial bank. Um, and, and commercial bank also happens to be a, such a nominate named uh, institution. That's right. Yes. 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 Uh, also in being the recipient 
not given freely, but yeah. the recipient large of, volume, large, of volume. La large volumes of direct placements. Yes. Now the whole problem is this: yeah. that when initially these direct, the so-called direct placements, this is where you call somebody and say, "Listen, we've got this rate, rate X percent. Yeah. We need some money. Yeah. Have you got anything to give us?" Yeah. They, it's not advertised or anything like that. They call you and say, look, can you? And then it's given at what they call the weighted average yield. Not always, Farah. Just one point yes. I want to interrupt there. The question of advertising. Yeah. You know, cert at certain times, the direct placements have taken place soon after, after the, the advertisements and the auctions. That's right. I, I, I grant so that. You can't just rule out that. No, factor. no, that's true. They, they mentioned that too. Yeah. But my point is this that these direct placements yeah. were designed in effect yeah. for what we call the state the, the, the state agencies, the captive audience. Yeah. This is things like the EPF, the NSB, uh, the state banks and so on. That was designed for them. However, in February 2008, according to these books, Mr. Cabral went ahead and they started issuing these things to the primary dealers as well. Now in here is one line which I found absolutely astounding. Um, our uh, chief investigator uh, Gayan Somachandra pointed this out in 10 seconds, 10 nanoseconds. He said, look, this is the monetary board did not comment on this for a whole seven years. <laughs> so they were either muddle-headed <laughs> or asleep or shouldn't have been there anyway. I mean, far as I don't think... I that, don't know, but that's how it appears now. I don't know what the circumstances was no, and all that. Means. I won't disagree with that comment that is made by your colleague. You know, it's a very valid comment. But let him be reminded of the fact that when... Mr. Ranil Vikramasinghe changed this pattern on yeah. his own and gave directives for the governor appointed by him yeah. to resort to a certain practice. This report comments that it was a bad practice, it was never reported to the monetary board as well. Exactly. So, so I mean, it's the same this, thing. This, this lapses in the monetary board, you see, have been continuing in some times. But I want to tell you what, add one more thing to your your comment which is very valid yeah. about this uh, large volumes being given to the primary uh, deal uh, primary deal out of the primary out of the out uh, of the so these are non state yes yes out of the primary dealers also to certain selected uh, things yeah. now there is another factor that we have to take into consideration in that context that is you know the government or the central bank uh, people who control the Finances the, the of the country, yeah. you know, they cannot the, they cannot just create an artificial situation by getting only the captive funds all to come into play, mm. killing all the other operations in the country. Mm. That cannot be done. So you have to have a balance, a fair balance of fair balance of uh, a distribution of the opening to private sector as well. This balance has to be maintained at any cost and it is vitally very important for the movement of the, the economy forward. For in that perspective, you know, you can't say that Provident Fund was not given a chance and Provident Fund did not dominate in that uh, offer. Mm. Instead, they took only one part and the other company... I'm glad you're using the word dominate. It's yeah. coming nicely to my next question. Yeah. And thank you for all the questions. I, they're all here. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, please, send, please keep sending them in. We've still got a few more minutes. Um, by SMS, 0772 300 305. Now then, Mrs. Ruchipala, you said dominate. There was one company, even during that time, I'm not talking about the Mahindran years we yeah. talked about before. Yeah. Um, there's one company um, that received the bulk, or if you like, the lion's share yeah. of the direct placements, or, or certainly large volumes. Yeah. Uh, first capital treasuries. Yeah. Now then, 
If you examine at the time the, the shareholding, there were companies connected to Perpetual, companies connected to Perpetual. Yeah. Or connected to the family that owned Perpetual. Yeah. Who were a dominant shareholder in that company. Yeah. And they received yes. big ticket, big amounts of direct placements. Yeah. So it appears to me, and then five days after the so-called bond scam of 2015, yeah. five days later, they exit from, the, the Yoloshis family exit from that shareholding. They wanted to have a monopoly. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. They, they exited yeah. and they left the scene. They didn't want to Because, share the of course, by then they <laughs> yeah. had their own. Yeah. They had perpetual uh, treasuries. Yeah. But isn't that... Is, where, 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 is, there a, is there some... Uh, there is. There is. I agree. I see your point. I see your point. The antenna is yeah. alerted. The contamination has been lying there. Yeah. At, at, from some time. You know, the process has been contaminated to some degree, with maybe with the know of people with or without the know of the people, but they knew what they were doing. Indeed. But there are other contributory factors for us. Now, in direct placement business also, yeah. what is relevant is whether the prospective uh, buyer, purchaser, has the means yeah. and the contacts to invest in those I mean, over and above the others in the market, in that hurry. So that capacity to invest, that their contacts that they have built up over the time for reselling the bonds or on, on whose behalf they are purchasing those, yeah. you know, that could have been at a higher level compared to the other primary dealers in operation. So they got experience, they got the capacity, they had the know-how, and they spelled into the new era now you know, I to monopolize to the situation. I want to ask you another question. Much has been made of this, yeah. of the, uh, you know, I, we thought we'd go into the previous years, the, the pre-Mahendran years. Yeah. First, because this is the first thing anyway. Um, there's much here that says that when they made these direct placements, yeah. they used what is known as the weighted average yield rate. Yeah. And that was the average of all the bids they make. They, yeah. You know, they give it a bit of weightage here and there. And they have this W-A-Y-R is the term, uh, the, the initials. Now, what, what they're saying that in some instances, this, the rate given under this weighted average yield, direct placements, was actually higher than what was the rate in the secondary market for similar maturities of bonds. How do you explain that? I think it's a very highly technical thing, but that reflects one thing. Yeah. If the secondary market rates were low down, that shows that the, the operations in the secondary market were rather dead yeah. or low. Yeah. But the country's situation was the need, the requirements and the interest rates prevailing at that time was at a different level. But, so, but, but that gap, yeah. that gap between yeah. the weighted average rate and the prevailing rate, the market rate is what the secondary, yes. uh, uh, the secondary market is all about. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So there's a gap. That gap apparently cost us nearly 10 billion rupees. I mean, is that the cost of doing business? No, that's not the cost of business. Those are the cost of circumstances, I believe. Okay. You see, that, that, that you cannot avoid. Okay. Because you are, what you are trying to do is by even offering bonds, releasing bonds to the market. You know, what you are doing... That then is, leads me to... Now, I, I get your point. Yeah. I get your point. Yeah. The circumstances, we needed the money. Yeah. We, we needed the money. There was no appetite for this thing in the secondary market. We, we can't raise money from there. Yeah. So we had to issue new bonds at a higher rate yeah. to, to get the appetite. Right, okay, get it. But then why, why, what about the difference? It's 10 billion. Um, it is, uh, it's a remarkably um, lot of money. Or is it not a lot of money? 
Well, that's a hypothetically calculated amount, you know. That's not a loss that is caused like the loss that was caused in the in the bond scam. Right. You know, it it is going to somebody else's gain. What what is the difference? No, the difference is there. You create an artificial rate. Yeah. To the bonds that you are offering. Yeah. You know, by giving pre uh, information beforehand, and then you get that going. In this case, it was not like that. Yeah. You you offer the volume at a certain rate, yeah. and it is left to the people who take. Right. You know, to that uh, deal with that uh, once it once they take it. But doesn't this system open the door ever so slightly, even ever so slightly, for? Uh, no, the department. similarity. You can't draw similarity between what happened here in the bond scam and that stuff. Okay. That it's entirely different operation. I think perhaps an expert on that thing yeah. can be able, will be able to explain it further. Or if we go into that in detail, we might be able to explain it in more detail for the public to understand. Indeed, we yes. we are planning yes. on having uh, several uh, discussion programs. We must. Uh, we we uh, we will be inviting you. Yeah. We'll be inviting uh, a former deputy governor, Dr. W. A. Vijay Wardena, uh, and. Uh, people from uh, the different sides of the political spectrum with an economics uh, and uh, financial background uh, to get to the bottom of what it is. Several messages here have got the same theme. Yeah. They're asking you whether the people of Sri Lanka will be able to recover any of these monies. We have to. I think it will be one of the tasks of uh, President Gotabe Rajapaksa to go into these things, not in that mighty advertised hurry, but he is doing things in a very calculated way as it goes. Mm -hmm. He has a lot of uh, hurdles to overcome, you know, like what is happening in the parliament, the yeah. status of the parliament. Yeah. I think he will certainly overcome that, but his approach will be perfectly in line to deal with these aspects of the matter. I'm very confident about it. Of course, right now, he's settled with a lot of problems. We have to bear with it. But, we have to certainly but sometimes yeah. but sometimes it's a little bit much to stomach because you find that whilst this the attorney general's department described it as the greatest scam, financial scam yes ever to yeah. inflict uh, to affect yeah. the people of independent sri lanka yeah and yet you find that apart from that one matter that's anyway going on in the in the courts no real, no legal action being taken against the bond scammers. No, far as one thing, I think I have, a, I tend to agree with the Attorney General's Department in asking the Speaker not to release this in this hurry. I don't think it, it, it serves only one political purpose for the people who are interested in subduing or subjugating or, pre, or putting down the impact of the bond scam to dilute it with other things that they that but, they attribute. But uh, what the Attorney General in fact said yes. is that he doesn't want everything to yes. be released. He, he wanted to no, but only parts. Of it. Definitely that is yielding to the pressure of the public and these parliamentarians. I don't think there is any need for anything to get out of this if the forensic audit report serves the purpose of establishing what the bond scam, what we have raised under the bond scam that would suffice for the moment. But they, it not only deals with that, but yeah. it also deals with the past. Yeah, it has to be because you have to take corrective measures for us. Yes, I know, but, for the but the sad thing is that yes. no corrective measures seem to have been taken. Then. Who should have done it? Who should have done it? Well, the same person. For, for five it. years, yeah. for four and a half years, that government did not care to do that. They deliberately avoided that. In fact, instead of doing that, they resorted to uh, certain lapses, shortages, shortcomings and weaknesses in the system to their own advantage. This is what we are going to emphasize, emphasize and emphasize. Right. Um, you have been in the central bank for some time. Uh, well, you've been in banking for some time. Uh, Mrs. Suruspal is not a central banker, uh, but is a banker elsewhere. Uh, has there been any other such irregularities in the past that you can think of? There are many. Take the People's Bank, for example. The entire banking industry needs a complete, complete washout. Complete. Particularly the state bank sector. Yeah. I recently wrote a letter 
which was copied to uh, pre uh, President His Excellency the President, mm. I address it to the new chairman to make him aware of, of what is on. going on in the People's Bank. I mean, that's our duty. Indeed. Well, you know, Mr. Sipala Tenekun, we, we've got more, we've got more, much more reading to do, and which we are doing. We've got, uh, we're consulting various experts and uh, getting them all to uh, look at this, and uh, no doubt uh, we will keep you. Today we hope to come to you later in the day with uh, the losses which we know that you're very concerned about, which is the EPF, uh, you know, the, the people's monies. Alarming. Uh, Alarming, indeed. And uh, we also are planning a whole series of different programs that will highlight one of the most important matters ever to come out of the, uh, under the carpet. Uh, and we will be following it all. Mr. Rusipala Tenekun, thank you ever so much. And we, of, of course, uh, look forward to welcoming you on our other programs uh, where we hope to encourage a full, transparent accountability process and recovery process. Thank you. I look forward to it. <laughs> Thank you very much. And that's the way it was on Newsline Live, extended as it was for a few minutes. Thank you. Take care. And of course, God bless. News First Newsline with Faraz Shaukutali.